All right, this is our final day working on our assignment project, assignment three, and trying to get all three components submitted by 11.59 tonight, if not by the end of class, right? And even if you just get one component submitted, like your rough storyboard sketch, then you can always resubmit later for full credit, even after the midterm. I've added some examples because I found these. These were just created off of a designer in a site called Behance, which is Adobe's portfolio site. So this is Jake Longoria, who used 3D models to make emojis as 3D animations. And there's a bunch of them. And I found it interesting because really there's only two that showcased a transformation, right? So of these, which one showcases a transformation? of these nine. The first one, right? That's the only one that has a, a defined change to beginning, middle, to end. Even if it would just change to one color. It's not enough just to have the eye open. That's like having the nose drip, right? And this one looks like it's transforming. And you can kind of say it is, but it doesn't actually change state. It's just moving. Now, this was my favorite one. This was the second one that transformed. I think that one's great. So I might program that into my phone, but I'm not sure what it means. Anyway, we want our animations not just to be a cool movement, no matter how cool it is. We want it to be a clear transformation. I could see the argument made for that being a transformation too, but you don't want it to be subtle. You know, you want it to be obvious. And maybe that's just because I grew up with transformers, right? So the first requirement, I'm going to edit my entries here. The first requirement is a rough storyboard. And then all that process stuff that I added about collecting assets, that's actually not a requirement. Our next requirement is our finished GIF animation. Saved as a GIF animation script file. So requirement two I thought that would work before now. Final GIF animation file. And what size should that file be? Yep, eight inches by eight inches at one hundred pixels per inch. Another way to say that is 800 by 800 pixels. And I don't have that yet. So that's the next thing I need. But I've started that process. So I open up my folder. And this is what I have so far. Actually, I have very close to it. These are my frames, all as individual JPEGs. And if I use this program, if I'm doing it all for free, easygift.com maker, and I put those frames into it, and then I s upload the files and then save the GIF, this is what I get. And if I test it with a web browser, I like to use Safari for this because I don't use it for anything else and I feel sorry for it. There we go. Now this actually already meets all the requirements because is there a transformation shown? I'd say there are actually two transformation shows. One subtle, one more dramatic, right? The subtle one is right here, that little glow. And then the more dramatic one is the book blackening while it sets ablaze. But why is this not super satisfying yet, though it meets all the requirements and could get full credit? Because it uses something I've already designed and it showcases a, a clear transformation beginning, middle to end. And that's just because it jump cuts at the end, right? You have this inferno and then just immediately goes back to the beginning. So it would be nice, like I have in my storyboard sketch, to set it to reset so that the smoke clears and reveals the first frame. Now that's kind of extra, but it will make it much more satisfying. So this will remind it remind us how we set up these animation frames. So this is assignment three, 
And what I do is I open up my assets file first in PhotoP, and then I open up my stage file. And to do that, I open up PhotoP in a new browser window or tab. And then I drag and drop these PSD files that I've saved. Very important to save them as PSD so that you have all your layers. Your assets file is not very good if you flattened all your layers. right? So that's the last one that I merged together and brought over. And then I also want to open my stage file. So I now do that by saying within PhotoP, file open. And then I have to find my stage file. And it's going to be the PSD that says stage. Now they look identical. Or very close. I'm not sure why this one's always looking a little brighter, but it, it, it isn't. It's copied over. All right, so that's my last frame. Now I need to build my next frame here and bring it over to my stage. And to do that, I first have to deselect and delete that merged layer. And now I need to just build up more and more. So I'm going to make this pretty simple for myself in assets. I'm going to select all my my groups that have smoke, and we're talking a lot of layers here. Hold down Shift, select all of them, hit Command J, and that's more smoke. And then I'm just going to right click, come on, and say Merge Layers. And now that puts it all onto one layer. And now I can do Option Command T, because smoke softens anyway as it grows. And I'm just going to grow it and maybe flip it and add that to the smoke that was there before. So now it goes from this to this. Really big, right? I don't even need to turn off the others because actually in some ways it looks kind of nice to turn off the others. Okay, now the flames, same thing. I'm gonna take all those flame layers, all these flame groups that I was so careful with before I'm going to select all three of those groups by holding down Shift, hit Command J. It will duplicate all of those. And then I am simply going to right click on those three and merge those all those groups together into one layer just to make it easy to Option Command T, Transform, Grow, and Flip. So now we have a true inferno, not only taking over the book, but now it's spreading to everything else. The only change I need to make to the head is maybe to darken it more. So I can do this with darkening the drop shadow all the way and taking the color overlay and making that darker, taking the gradient overlay making that darker, maybe playing with the scale a little bit so that red gets in there. And maybe this is just a new idea, which I like. The, the smoke is so heavy that I want to give it its own drop shadow. But I'll take it down for the moment. All right, so that's my next frame. So what do I do? I go to my topmost visible layer. A lot of us have this written down now, but we do this over and over again. Topmost visible layer, select that layer, hold down shift, scroll down to my base layer, my bottom layer, selects all of them, hold down option, then go to layer, merge layers. It creates a merged layer at the top. Command A to select it all, command C to copy it all. Click on your stage, command V to paste it in on top. Okay, next, go back to my assets, Command D to deselect, delete that. Going to duplicate that smoke layer again, Command J. Going to transform it and grow it again, Option. Flip it again horizontally. And I'm going to do the same thing with the flames. Duplicate those flames, Command J. Option, Command uh, T. <laughs> Grow it. Now it's just kind of overtaking everything. 
can even kind of move it down to start affecting the bottom. And for good measure, whoops, flip it. So Option Command T, right click. Come on, Option Command T. Got to be on the layer. Right click and then flip horizontally. Maybe move it a little bit so it looks better. This is just to ensure that I've got a lot of movement going on in these animations. Now that's a pretty big change. That is a transformation of environment, right? Now. And so now what do I do? I go to my topmost visible layer. I don't need to worry about anything underneath because it's all overtaken now. And I'm gonna hold down shift, scroll down to my base layer. So they're all selected, then hold down option, go to layer, merge layers, find the merged layer at the top, Command A to select it all, Command C to copy it all, click on my stage, Command V to paste it in. And now to follow my set to reset, it can be helpful at this stage to actually have your, your storyboard sketch open because I'm now at this stage where the emojis grayed out and smoke is everywhere. So now I need to start clearing the smoke. So how can I start clearing the smoke? It's a good idea to save my progress so I can see it. So to start clearing the smoke, I first have to delete this merged frame, merged layer. And to start clearing it, I am going to start taking down the other layers, all these background layers, the book layer, the base layer smoke. So I just have the flames and then I'm going to flip them one more time. I have a selection active. I have to undo command D. So Option Command T, and then flip horizontal, and then maybe move it a little bit. And then, let's see, did I already swap the smoke? No, I haven't yet. And I want to start clearing the smoke. I'm not going to, well, let's see. Option Command T, you see how weird it looks to flip this again and grow it a little bit more. That doesn't look too bad. And then my background, I don't really need any of these expressions turned on. So I'm just simplifying again. All I need is the base head and I need this backdrop. All right. So now I'm gonna copy this one, same thing, hold down shift, scroll down to my base layer, hold down option, layer, merge layers, Go to that merged layer at the top. Command A to select it all. Command C to copy it all. Command V to paste it in. So now the smoke is going to start to dissipate. And the way I want that to happen, I can actually do some animating <coughs> on the stage at this point. So Command D and deselect. Save my assets. Now this is called animating on the stage because I have 23 frames and I can start to play these in different orders. So what if now, instead of just keep on modifying and making new frames, what if I take this frame, this layer in my stage and I duplicate it, Command J. And then that whole layer, I option Command T and I just flip it horizontally and then move that above the other layer. So now